This is the Wi-Files app generator. This is a rapid prototyping tool that software developers can use for the creation of sophisticated diagramming apps. It can help you load data from various data sources, transform it into a graph and specify how the diagram elements should be visualized. Since this is a low-code tool, all of this can be done without having in-depth knowledge of the Wi-Files API or even a programming language. You can share your results with your teammates or scaffold the source code for your project directly from within the app. Let's see how it works. Once you go to the website, you will see the startup screen. You can start a blank new project, open an existing project, load one of the sample projects to get started quickly, or continue with your last session that is stored in the local storage of your browser. We'll start with a new project. The first ti time you start the app, you will get to see the tutorial, but you can always get back to it later via the main menu. After creating the project, you can give it a name. At the center of the screen, there's the main canvas where you can place and connect elements to design the data flow of your application. In the left side panel, there's a palette of the available data flow nodes. Hover over them to get a short description of what they can be used for. Let's start with some simple static data. We take the text node and drag it to the canvas. Selecting an element by clicking on it will show properties specific to that type of element in the details panel on the right hand side. In this case, there's a text area where I can enter the text for my data node. Let's add some simple JSON text. Hovering over a node's pins will show their current value. There are input and output pins depending on the type of the node. So let's take that string data and convert it to a real JSON object. For this, we take the JSON node and drop it onto the canvas. It will immediately warn us that this node requires an input to be connected to its input pin. Clicking on the warning will highlight the node in question. So let's connect the two nodes by dragging from the output pin to the input pin. The warning goes away, but now there's an error. Again, I can click on the arrow in the output pane or hover over the element to see and find more about the problem. In this case, I obviously did not format my string correctly, and thus the string was invalid JSON that could not be parsed. I can use the convenient text editor dialog to edit longer text easily. This editor also has syntax highlighting for various data types built in. So I add the missing quotes and the error goes away. Hovering over the output pin, I can now see that the JSON string was parsed successfully in a, into a real JSON object. Let's display that data using the spy node, which we can place anywhere on the canvas and connect it to the sum, same output pin to show the values live on the canvas. That's not very interesting yet, but let me introduce you to another important processing node, the projection node. It can select a certain property from data. Once I connected it to the JSON data, it asked me to specify a binding that determines which value should be selected and passed to the output pin. Since in this example, the actual data is stored in the data property, I will specify that, specify that name here. This is a so-called binding field, and you will find it used in various other nodes too. There are typically three different ways to specify a binding, and you can switch between them using the icon on the right. E stands for expression mode, and allows us to specify a property name or an expression that directly works on the properties of the data. There's also F, which stands for function mode, which is very similar, but allows for more complex expressions and for accessing the data item itself too. As we'll see later, there's sometimes also C for constant value available. This lets you spe specify a static constant, but this would not be very useful for a projection node. So let's specify data and reconnect the spy node to the output of the projection node. 
we get to see this nice preview visualization of our array of numbers. When we change the data, it will immediately update in the live view. Since all of this is actually an elaborate diagramming editor built on top of WiFAS itself, we can use these various editor features to modify our flow graph. We can select elements, cut, copy, and paste and delete them. We can duplicate parts, and we can clean up our diagram with the built-in automatic layout. And of course, undo changes that we don't like. But how do we create a diagram from data with nodes and edges? Let's have a look at one of the examples that are bundled with the app. The simple JSON example shows how to load a graph from JSON data. It also starts with some static JSON string, which then gets transformed into a JSON object. This object has two properties, nodes and edges, that contain multiple elements each. Using two projection nodes, we select the array of nodes and edges. In the hover spy, we can cycle through the various elements in the collections. As a next step, we need to tell Wi-Files that these are actually our nodes and edges in the graph. We use these node source and edge source nodes, which are fed into a graph builder node. From the small plus signs on the pins, you can tell that more than one input may be connected to them. This is also known as fan in. Also, while connecting edges sources is optional, connecting a node source is required. Optional pins are hollow, whereas required pins are filled. In the node source, we need to declare for each item in our dataset which property identifies the node. In this case, it is the ID property. This is important for the declaration of the edge source, because edge data needs to somehow reference the nodes they connect. In this sample data, the S and T properties of the edges reference the node IDs, and that's why they have been de declared as bindings for the edge source. With this information, Graph Builder can create the structure of the graph, but it doesn't know yet how to visualize the elements. What shapes and colors to use, what labels to add, and where, etc. That's the job of the node creator and edge creator flow nodes, which are also connected to node source and edge source respectively. The node creator node provides bindings for the type of the node, for its fill, stroke and shape, as well as the layout of the node, which determines its location and size. In this case, the color property in the data is used to specify the stroke of the rectangle. But of course, this could also be some constant. The same holds true for the fill and the geometry. There's a similar set of options for edges too, and both node and edge creator can have any number of label configurations attached that will tell the engine what labels to add to the graph, how they should look like, and where they should be placed. Again, all of this can be data bound. The graph builder node itself finally gets connected to a result graph node, which displays the resulting graph. We could also add a graph layout node in between in the case that our input data does not have layout information included, which is actually very typical. That gives us access to some of the very powerful automatic graph layout algorithms found in my files. Once we have the result graph node connected and properly set up in our flow, we can finally use the play button to show a preview of our graph. And once we are happy with what we see, we can save our flow graph as a JSON file, or optionally upload it as a GitHub GIST to share the link with others. 
We may even specify that the link should automatically load the preview so that we can share our work with someone else simply by providing a link. As a software developer, however, the most interesting export option is the option to export the resulting program as a source code application that can then be fine-tuned to, to match even the most sophisticated specific requirements. So let's have a look. First, we get to choose our favorite UI framework. We can create React, Angular, Vue-powered applications and more options will, options will be added soon. We can also decide which programming language to use and what additional features the resulting app should provide. We also need to provide information where the Wi-Files diagramming library and its license is located. If you haven't done so, there's also a convenient link that lets you download the trial version of the Wi-Files for HTML diagramming software library. Once everything is set up, we can hit the export button and the app will create an application bundle for us. Now all that is left is an npm install to get your very own version of the app that you created for you to play around with in your IDE and add new features. We hope you like this app and can make good use of it. Let us know your feedback. And as always, happy diagramming with Wi-Files.